Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Wisdom Bites. Today is Father Craig Friday. How are you doing, Father Craig? I'm good. I'm trying to unlock my phone <laughs> by looking at my face, but it wasn't working because the microphone's in the way. Uh. So I'm, I'm doing well. I was trying to pull up the questions for this. So I'm good now. I got questions on here. You got questions? Oh, yeah, I got it. I know, <laughs> good I know, stuff. I know what we're going to talk about. This is good. <laughs> This is so good because we're also filming you do that. Oh, and I love no. it. Oh, no. That's right. That's on camera. Hey. Okay. That was my selfie moment, right? Yeah. yeah. Someone's going to screenshot. That'll be the thumbnail, I'm sure. Perfect. Let's okay. do it. All right. Go. Um, <laughs> um, Every well, time you say hello, beautiful people, I think you're talking to me. But then because you're saying people and not just like Father Craig, mm-hmm. I think maybe you're not talking to me. Well, Am you I are, included in that? You are. Okay. Yeah, you are a person, okay. especially if you listen to the podcast. Oh, then, yeah, that's I who see. I'm really talking to is the listeners, but you're here. and yeah. So everyone else isn't beautiful? Um, well, I'm not <laughs> saying it to them. <laughs> they're beautiful, sure. They're made in the image and likeness of God. I'm so beautiful. yes. I'm beautiful. They have dignity. I'm be- yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can we Photoshop my face for this? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> continue, like continue. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Well, um, Father Craig Friday is the part of the show that we release on Fridays. And you can send in your questions, and a Catholic priest will answer them, or at least try to talk about them. All right. So that's what we do. That's right. And so the very first question of the day oh, I know this is, is one I'm very intrigued about. Oh no. Um, would you rather cry hot sauce or sweat mayonnaise for the rest of your life? Definitely hot sauce. I can use that mayonnaise. And, and gross. But but okay. So the mayonnaise is like yeah, that's all no, over your skin. That's just, terrible. I, you can't eat but it. Like hot, hot sauce, sauce is in your eyes. I know. But so that sounds oh, like it would hurt. Like it's gonna burn my eyes. Yes. I thought it'd be like I just cry them, but like I could use this hot sauce for later. No, like all of the other That'd ancillary be things. Too. That'd be like Pizza the Hut eating himself from Spaceballs. <laughs> 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 yes, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, he ate himself to death. He yeah, got locked in a hot car. Anyway, um, you don't remember that from the movie? I've seen that movie one time, and it was uh, probably twelve years ago. I'm dating myself. Yeah, yeah, but okay. it, it was a good parody. But um, all right, yeah, that would burn your eyes, wouldn't it? How yeah. hot is the hot sauce? Is it like Cholula or is it like habanero? Let's go like middle of the road, like Louisiana hot sauce. Oh, I don't like Louisiana hot sauce. Mm. But mayonnaise, that's gross. It, especially in the summer heat. I'm just thinking Dude. it's all over your body. Like, Why uh, would you even ask that question? <laughs> Who's, whose idea was this? It was Nick's. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's Nick's idea, I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, I, I oughta. I know. Yeah. I will. Is that a Popeye thing? Is that who did that? Yeah. Yeah. That's Popeye. Yeah. That's well, I don't, know if, I don't know if Popeye says that or like one of the other characters in the show. Okay. Dude, but, dude. So are you going to stick with the hot sauce? Yes. Okay. I'd rather cool. I'd rather I burn and other people suffer with my mayonnaise. Yeah. Sweat. You do cry less than you sweat, probably. Yeah, I don't cry at all. So, so I yeah. probably never even use the hot sauce. Yeah, it'd only be like you know a couple times a year, maybe. So <laughs> only when you watch Old Yeller. Go ahead. There it is. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, moving right along. Father Craig, how do we know that the Eucharist is real and not just bread and wine? Okay. Well. Um, I mean, the, the primary answer is because Jesus said it, right? I mean, that's that's our confidence, right? Mm-hmm. It is an act of faith, right? I mean, when you look at the, the bread and the wine or you eat the bread, and the, uh, it was once bread and wine. I mean, it looks like bread. It tastes like bread. It looks mm-hmm. like wine. It tastes like wine. But by faith, we know it, it no longer is because of what God has said, right? Yeah. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body. This is my blood. And he gives the command, do this in memory of me. Um, and so that's the the basic uh, reason is because God God says right uh, it's no longer bread it's no longer wine, um, but we also see how the Lord um, gives a lot of confirmation for that and context for that. Um, a really good work that I um, I've enjoyed is uh, by Brant Petrie, um, the Jewish Roots of the Eucharist, that really outlines how uh, the Eucharist is the fulfillment of a number of Old Testament. Um, I guess, uh, ideas or, or think th- things that are should have shown in the old Testament, like the manna from above, uh, the show bread, um, you know, uh, what's the other one that's fulfilled. There's one other than he talks about, you, you can read the book. I, I don't need to read it to you. Right. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of things in there that really sort of point towards what the Eucharist is. And, uh, um, then also shows it to be, um, uh, the, the real presence, like like it's no longer bread and wine now, it is the real presence. Mm. Um, and so there's a lot of Old Testament things that pre- prefigure that. 
Okay. Um, that's just pretty cool. Uh, but then also uh, we can say that because Jesus says, but then also we have a pretty pretty good explanation of that in John's Gospel, chapter 6, uh, where the Lord talks about it as um, um, a chunk of flesh that you have to eat, sarks, right? Um, you know, it's a uh, you know, word for that chunk of meat. Um, and uh, people misunderstand him, um, supposedly, and uh, yet he doesn't correct them. That's a pretty big thing. You know, he says, no, you actually have to eat my bre- uh, bl- uh, body yeah, and drink my blood, right? Um, and so that's kind of another clue. Um, and then Paul also talks about it in the New Testament about how it really is the body of Christ. And mm-hmm. um, the way it's treated by the early church community makes it pretty clear that that's how the apostles and uh, the disciples understood that event mm-hmm. and what they were doing. They believed that that event was being uh, represented, made present, um, that one sacrifice once for all was being made present. And then the whole history of the church um, up until about a thousand years believed in the real presence of Christ. It wasn't uh, until, um, you know, much later that any doubt about that being the body and blood of Christ um, entered in. And then, of course, the Protestant Reformations heightened that even more because they wanted to throw out um, uh, the church's authority, especially uh, the priesthood. And Mm -hmm. if the Eucharist is necessary and really is what we say it is, then the priesthood is necessary, right? You can't have the Eucharist without the priesthood. Um, And so the meanings were changed and and lost uh, Mm -hmm. in that. So there's a lot of things that point to how we know, um, but ultimately it is an act of faith, which is to believe what God has said in the person of Jesus Christ. Um, And we know that Jesus Christ has said, this is my body, this is my blood. Yeah. So I think that the fact that Jesus said it, I know that a lot of uh, our Protestant brethren will say that, yeah, at the Last Supper that was Mm -hmm. true, but then after that, that it was just a symbol. Um, mm-hmm. You mentioned that for the first thousand years of the church, this was something that wasn't really like... It wasn't in doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah. What sort of sources could we go to to see that that is true? My favorite one is Justin Martyr, one mm-hmm. of the early church fathers, and he has a really um, good um, sort of writing explaining to the emperor what Christians believe. And he talks about um, the Eucharist and what we believe about the Eucharist. And um, that's in the first couple hundred years of the church. Yeah. It's really good. Um, I think that's one of my favorite sources. Um, there's another other early church fathers that you could refer to as well. I can't pull them off the top of my head, but okay. uh, they're out there. Gotcha. Yeah. That'd be another thing we asked about uh, last week uh, of systematic theologians that uh, have no, documents this would be or a things. Pr- but this would be patristic scholars. Yeah. Patristic scholars. Yeah. No, last week I asked about systematic. Uh, this week would be patri- patristic scholars out there. There it is. Yeah. If you uh, know people yeah. who have uh, said that the Eucharist is true. Yeah. If Monsignor Jeffrey Steenson is listening to this, he should respond. <laughs> Perfect. That's my patristics uh, professor in, in seminary. Gotcha. Cool. Um, Fun note: He was the first head of the Anglican Ordinariate for um, when the Anglican uh, churches were becoming Catholic. Some of them. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I know. So he was a, an Episcopalian bishop before he uh, converted. Oh, so that's a fitting spot for him to I be. I know. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. Cool. Uh, so moving on to question number two: um, How can you tell if there's a demon present? Oh. And how can you make it go away? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So first off, we do believe in demons. Um, what a demon is, is mm-hmm. an angel uh, who has rebelled against God. Right. Mm-hmm. And that happened in the first moments of, of uh, creation when God creates the angels. Um, some choose against him irrevocably. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are what we call demons. And so uh, really what they want, um, in a certain sense, is for us to be as miserable as they are. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's the basic premise. And so um, you know, somehow in the mystery of, of creation, the Lord permits them a certain activity, mm-hmm. right, uh, until the end. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things you could sort of go into with that. Um, but their activity is generally uh, supernatural, mm-hmm. right, meaning that it's not... Um, physical typically, though sometimes there can be manifestations of that. The ordinary operation of, of these demons is temptation, inordinate fear, um, you know, and, and so um, those are real things. And then uh, in an extraordinary way, there can be things like oppression or obsession um, and ultimately possession, mm-hmm. right? These are some of the ways that uh, these, these entities can work. Um, but they do have no power except what is given to them. Right, in those regards. So their ordinary operations they can do without human participation. They right. can tempt us to sin. They can um, sort of bring about a certain um, sensory experience of fear, right, mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. Um, but oppression, I guess, 
some of that can happen without sort of the person who's being oppressed uh, cooperating with it, Mm -hmm. right? But possession cannot happen without that person choosing and giving themselves over to it. Um, And so, um, you know, how do you tell if if it's, um, if there's uh, demonic uh, activity? I think the first thing you have to do is rule out natural causes, right? Yeah. Um, So if you feel fear because someone's pointing a gun at you, that would be an ordinary fear, (laughs) right? Now, if you feel the same type of fear and no one's pointing a gun at you, well, um, there could be multiple causes for that. Sure. There could be the cause of, um, well, there is a physical problem, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Where, I don't know, your adrenal glands are not functioning properly. There could be a psychological problem of some woundedness uh, in your past that's attached a particular sort of emotion to a trigger. And you sort of have that experience and it triggers all of that emotion, right? You caught mm-hmm. out of the corner. This could be like uh, PTSD. Let's say you're a soldier yeah. and, uh, you know, it, you were in combat and uh, now you feel this fear all the time. That could be very crippling. That'd be like a, a, a psychological uh, issue, right? right. Um, but imagine, you know, you rule out some of those causes or you address those causes and it persists in that way. Well, you might be able to say, hey, there could be some spiritual um spiritual stuff going on here. And so you, you kind of have to rule out those things before you ever get to that. And like the same thing with possession, like people are like, Oh, you need an exorcist, you know, and there's a lot of joking about that. But when that really happens, um, you know, there's a pretty, pretty extensive process for going through it. And, mm-hmm. and there's going to be in consultation with psychologists, with counselors, um, with doctors, you, you have to make sure that the physical things are normal. The psychological things have been addressed. Oh, you address all those things. Mm-hmm. Then ultimately when some of these other signs are present, you can begin to tell and discern that there is some demonic presence uh, really there in terms of something like possession or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it is more, more, so possession is much rarer than people expect it to be. Um, but it does exist. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, you know, the ordinary operation of the enemy is more common than most people experience or, or think it is. And it's, it's actually more part of the ordinary day of life. Yeah. And so the best protection against um, the demonic um, is living a faithful life. Right, avoiding sin, doing the good, uh, living the sacraments, right, mm-hmm. receiving baptism and confirmation, Eucharist, and living those those things out, uh, making a regular confession is the first thing I'd recommend to anybody who is experiencing the demonic, right. Yeah. Um, and then there's some other helps too: the sacramentals, uh, blessed holy water and salt. Um, you know, people have me come bless their homes all the time. Um, you know, and uh, there's a certain authority attached to baptism, but there's an authority attached to the ministerial priesthood. Um, and so, um, you know, you can use those tools uh, to ask the demonic to leave. But, th- but the basic principle is this, is, um, you know, you want to acknowledge in the ordinary, in the ordinary sense, you want to acknowledge, uh, okay, this is not of the Lord. Um, I think the origin is of the enemy. Um, okay, but I don't want to um, give it my attention. Instead, I want to turn to the Lord to see his goodness and mm-hmm. ask him to rebuke it, right? Yeah. Um, and so you could say in the image of Christ, right, you know, um, I just entrust myself fully to you, Lord. And uh, I ask if there's anything demonic here that you, Lord, by your power and your name, Jesus, you would banish these things and ask these things to leave from here, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of the ordinary way of doing things. Yeah. There's a lot more there, too. We can do a whole lot of talking on this. Oh, yeah. I, I've uh, yeah. listened to hours upon hours of conferences oh. on spiritual warfare. Oh, tell me more. What did, what did you um, learn? The things that you just summarized are mm-hmm. actually like there's this... Uh, religious order of exorcist priests that is like mm-hmm. their primary ministry cool. is exorcisms and um the head he said that he receives about 400 requests a year mm-hmm. for like major exorcisms and That's like cool. in that process that you described of going through um like coaching people in prayer and um mm-hmm. he said that a life of daily meditation and receiving the sacrament of confession and then regular eucharist mm-hmm. um is one of the best wards yeah. oh, uh, absolutely. for demonic activity. That's awesome. Um, and then outside of that, after all those other processes mm-hmm. done, he said of the 400 requests that he gets a year, there may be four right. that are actual like major exorcisms where he has to go in with a couple of other Team, priests. Yeah. And, yeah. And do that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And there's so. a whole thing around sort of the deliverance ministry mm-hmm. and this sort of thing. Um, and I, I mean, I think that is a helpful ministry understood properly. It has to be Christ centered. You yeah. can't really, uh, you can get weird if it you're can. not careful. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when it gets uh, outside of the authority umbrella, you know, when people go off on their own and they're not under the authority of the church and it's authority of Christ, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a that's a real strict principle for that. Um, things like intercessory teams for when you're doing deliverance, uh, yeah. cleansing prayers, uh, mm-hmm. these sorts of things. So if anyone out there is interested in those sorts of things, um, Francis McNutt's book uh, was really good on it. Um, what's that called? 
Uh, I've actually never heard of him. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what it's called, but I've forgotten already. Uh, something about deliverance ministry. Um, there's a couple other really good books out there as well. Um, if you really are interested, email me and I'll try to find them for you. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I also so, like Dr. Bob Shute's book, Be Healed on Inner Healing Prayer. Mm, it's really good. Yeah. He's got some good stuff out there yeah, too. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, all righty. Last question of the day. Um, is there any physical proof that God exists or is it all spiritual? Well, um, so probably not in the way that they mean, but I mean, creation itself is physical proof that God exists, <laughs> yeah, that there okay, is yeah. something rather than nothing. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I think that people always think, uh, is there like a determinative, like one plus one equals two? But like, I, I mean, I, I think there is in that sense. I mean, you look at creation is like, why is there something rather than nothing? Right. That that's the that's yeah. the intriguing cause. People say, mm-hmm. Oh, the Big Bang. I'll say, Well, that's how it happened. But right? why? But why? Mm. Right? It doesn't go before there was, right? And the only mm-hmm. thing that explains that is God, right? Um, and so I think, you know, there's physical proof, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you could say, well, the incarnation's pretty physical in terms of that. <laughs> um, becoming man, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, resurrection, I'd say that's pretty physical proof, mm-hmm. right? Um you know, uh, I, th- I think in that sense, you know, but I don't think that's what this sort of question is really asking for, um, because there's not definitive, like, um, like God doesn't have letters written in the sky and fire, right. Saying, um, I was here. Right. Yeah. Um, and there's, I think there's a really good reason for that. Like why God doesn't do something like that. Um, uh, because the goal is not that we'd believe in him is that we would love him. And uh, one of the challenges here is that if it was so definitive that you would have no doubt in your mind, then you'd have no choice but to love him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, he wants there to be faith because there's more merit in that for you and for me. Um, There's more of a, I choose to love God versus like, if I don't do this, then, then this is the, this is the consequence sort of thing. Like Mm -hmm. um, he, he doesn't want a obedience out of fear, though that might be the beginning for many. Uh, He wants an obedience out of love. Right uh, to choose God rather gotcha. than be forced to Him, um, and so you're not going to find that kind of evidence. You're going to find uh, reason, and uh, believing God is very reasonable, but faith exceeds what reason can achieve on its own. And faith is reasonable, uh, but it goes beyond what reason can um, should have arrived at on its own power, just with within the realm of creation and, and nature. Yeah, yeah. So science can answer the questions how and what. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it can't answer the question of who and why. Gotcha. Particularly when it comes to the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really do want to emphasize, um, if you're going to read any encyclical um, in this day and age, I really think you should read uh, Fides et Ratio, Faith and Reason by John Paul II. Um, because we believe as Catholics that God is the same author of creation as the same author of revelation. And so faith and reason are 100% compatible. And uh, that relationship is very important. I'll have to put that on my reading list. It's a good one. Yeah. Also, Veritati Splendor is my other favorite. Okay. Good. Gotcha. When you, you were talking about uh, creation being evidence for God, mm-hmm. um, one of my favorite analogies is when, uh, if we think about, if we found an airplane buried in sand, mm-hmm. um, we would immediately think like, oh, okay, someone built an airplane and either like buried it here or like that crashed here and now like it's been covered in sand. We uh-huh. wouldn't just ima- automatically think like, oh, okay a conglomeration of stuff smashed into each other and created this airplane that would, that now like we could put gas in it and fly away. Yeah. Um, and you and I, that artifice was at work, like, right. Like man, some sort of intelligence that, that that's putting it all together. Right. Um, and you and I are way more complex. The universe is way more complex than an airplane. Mm -hmm. And yet we look at the vast expanse of all of it and think, nah, it's just all random. Right. Um, there's some really good, Gosh, there's a there's a scientist who works for the Vatican. There's a bunch of them who work for the Vatican, yeah. and I remember hearing a um, presentation on this at the University of Dallas, and it was so interesting. He talked about the universal constants and how any of them changed like a degree, mm. and like it's just all the things that um, he really addresses science, uh, the arguments against reason and science from a faith perspective using science. Gosh, if I can remember who that was, because it was so good. Now it was about six. 13 years ago. Um, <laughs> but it was just, it was one of the best presentations I've ever heard. I really enjoyed it. So there's lots of people out there who do address these sorts of things from that perspective. Um, if you want a sort of science answer um, yeah. to address the science sort of accusations of faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. That's probably completely unhelpful, but they, yeah. they're out there. They're out there. Um, one thing that just popped into my head is we could put it in the comments of um, 
the Vatican documents that we talked about, um, some of these other resources that if you're looking for further reading, we'll put it down in the hey, description. That so that then, awesome. um, yeah, we can have a link and you I can like go it. there. Um, but I think that's all the time we have for today. Um, if you're listening to this and thinking, man, I would really love to see their faces and see uh, as we're, we're chewing through some of these things, what we look like I while we're doing it. face the camera um, more. I like facing away. <laughs> I um, there you go. Kind of like <laughs> three quarter angle. Yeah. And if you have a question for Father Craig, please send that in to podcast at txstatecatholic.org. Uh, we just recently had a little blurb on our Instagram in which um, we asked, yeah, what kind of questions would you like to hear about? And we had some really great responses. So I'm looking forward um, to those questions. Yeah, they're going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, so uh, keep sending those in. They're great. They keep this show moving along. Um, and we really appreciate the input because then we're not just thinking, oh, what do people want to hear about? We don't have to make it up. We know that it's coming in. So um, please do that. Follow us at O-L-O-W-T-X State. Yeah, TX State. That's us on Instagram. And um, yeah, keep coming around. Uh, all of our students are back now. So this is exciting. It's this semester exciting. is getting into full swing. Yeah. And uh, we'd love to see you in person if you're able to. But alas, Father Craig, Our Lady of Wisdom, pray for us.